Hey guys, what's up? It is Itchy Nose. Eh. Welcome back to my channel. Now these, my friends, don't even need an introduction. We all know these are Copic markers. These are an alcohol-based professional artist grade marker. And these things are absolutely incredible. The blendability of these babies is just out of this world. And in general, that's a trait with alcohol markers is that you can just blend them and blend them and blend them like nobody's business. And you know, for as great as they are, I mean, the price just mm, doesn't match. The price of these six markers alone, for example, was $54, which when you break it down is about $9 almost per marker. Now on the flip side, we have Crayola. <laughs> Literally, I feel everybody who is watching this has worked with or played around with or draw with or literally anything with these markers. Crayola is a water-based marker. I got 10 of them for $2.80 at my local Walmart, which when you break that down, comes down to 28 cents per marker, which is, I mean, just night and day with the prices of these two, you know? Now, I don't know if it's because alcohol takes longer to dry. I don't know if it breaks down differently in the, with pigments, but alcohol just does something different when it comes to markers, you know? What if we could convert these Crayola ordinary everyday water-based markers into alcohol-based markers like Copics? And credit where credit is due, my good friend Jackie, aka Nerdy Crafter here on YouTube, about a year ago she did a video very similar to this where she had gotten DIY Make Your Own Marker by Crayola Kit and she had replaced the water portion with alcohol and got some pretty interesting results. So I will link her video down below since it was the inspiration to this video. And yeah, I truly believe that if this works, guys, it'll be a game changer because it'll save so much money, it'll revive so many markers that could have just been tossed out. Also, before we start, if you are new here and you would like to join the revolution, hit the subscribe button. And if you already are subscribed, turn on the notification bell, that way you can get notified for all my new videos. We got some good ones coming up that I'm really excited for. And yeah, with that being said, let's get this art experiment started, shall we? So the very first place that we are going to go to get this art experiment started is Walmart to pick up the essentials. First thing I'm going to get is three different Crayola 10 count markers. And the reason I'm getting three is because I'm going to try to do this experiment in a few different ways. I'm also going to get the fine tipped markers because you never know, they might work better for this experiment. And the last thing I'm gonna get that's probably the most important is the rubbing alcohol. Now at my local Walmart, this is all they had. And I do wanna say there is kind of a disclaimer. During my research, I was watching a Bailey J video and I stumbled across this comment that basically says that the ink that Copic uses is drastically different than everyday cheap synthetic rubbing alcohol and to not put rubbing alcohol in your Copics because it might break down your pigment. So class, if you are going to do this, I highly recommend using cheap markers or markers that you don't really care about. All right, so the very first way that I'm gonna try to accomplish this is something I'm calling the pouring method. I know, I sound so fancy. So basically with a pair of pliers or pretty much anything that has a good grip on it, I am carefully, carefully taking out the bullet nib or whatever nib Crayola has. And I'm gonna have just basically an empty little tube left over as so. And bro, you gotta be careful when you do this because it is so easy to accidentally rip off one of your markers and just completely waste it entirely. So be very, very careful when you do this. And that's all the prep work for step one. You'll basically end up with a bunch of barrels like that. Now onto the second method, which is the official name of the drip drop method. Again, self name, I'm very proud of it. Uh, for this one, it's very simple. All I'm gonna do is literally just let all of these markers dry out and that includes some of my sweet tiny babies the fine tipped markers just let them all dry out and now to just let these dry overnight isn't that right bowie my lab assistant tomorrow so this is where the alcohol comes into play. So with an eyedropper that I had lying around the house, I'm gonna fill that bad boy up with my alcohol and completely make a mess all over my desk, you know. This wouldn't be a Super Ray Dizzle video without a mess. 
And from there, I'm going to fill each and every barrel slash chamber full of rubbing alcohol. And you know, I just kind of eyeballed it. I didn't want to put too little or put too much alcohol in it. But when I put the, what I felt was the right amount, I then replaced and put back the sponge nib back into the chamber. Now onto the drip drop method, which is a lot slower. It's very time consuming, but it's a lot more cleaner. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to drip at one by one every bit of alcohol into the dried sponge to basically mix with the dried ink inside and revitalize my marker with rubbing alcohol. And if you are ever considering doing this project, less is not more. <laughs> like add as much alcohol as you can because you'll be surprised with how much alcohol can be absorbed into the little sponges. The time is now. So I went ahead and bought some Culpix that are kind of similar to the same color scheme as uh, the Crayola markers. And the two colors I'm gonna be swatching are green and blue because they are next to each other on the color wheel. And that's basically what you want because they'll fade into each other. Oh yeah, that's what I love. I love, love, love Copics because like you can just get such a beautiful transition from like one color to the other. I'm gonna let my dog out because she is acting a fool today. So yeah. All right, boy, let's go outside. No, well not outside. Let's go find Zach. Let's go sit somewhere, okay? Cause you're acting a fool today. Next up will be regular Crayolas that I have done absolutely nothing to. These are straight out of the store. All right, so the first one that I'm gonna try out will be the dripped Crayolas. Okay, here we go. Let's see if this works. Whoa, that is so crazy. Honestly, I was expecting this one to work the least. But I mean, that transition cannot be ignored. And it kind of makes me wonder if maybe if I just dripped a little bit more alcohol, I wonder if I would have gotten like a smooth transition that was opaque. All right, so next up will be the manually filled ones. Oh, oh, oh my God, oh my God. This one is like way filled up. Okay, I gotta work real, oh, what? Dude, the ink is like really coming out for this one. Oh my god, gotta work fast, gotta work fast. Me. <sighs> okay, let me just breather. I need a breather. <sighs> I am genuinely shocked right now because this gradient is so dark, it's so opaque, it's so smooth. It's literally a perfect transition. Oh my god, that is nuts. I'm genuinely so shocked right now that I'm going to compare it to some cheap Ohuhu markers. So yeah, the Ohuhu is clearly the winner as far as like the marker goes, but I mean, I am still currently in disbelief of how well that gradient is. And this brings us to the next one, which will be the dripped fine point. Mm, yeah, this one's not gonna work at all. Yep, nope, 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 nope. Whole lot of nope. Now onto, in my opinion, what is the most important test, and that's the drawing test. Now, I want to explain the weird background and the weird lighting in this segment. I had filmed one in my studio of me drawing with these markers, but I came to my mom's house to visit for a few days and I lost all the footage. I don't know where it's at. So I'm improv here at my mom's house and thank God I bring my camera because that's what's making it possible. But yeah, I honestly am truly enjoying these markers. I am genuinely surprised with how well they work when it comes to drawing and the paper that I'm using this isn't even like good drawing paper this is like some random I want to say poster board from my mom's back room okay so here's the final alcohol Crayola now at one point you do see some warping right here 
and that is 100% my fault because at one point I got too crazy with the marker and pressed really hard and all kinds of alcohol came out of the marker. So yeah, that part is my error. I am so impressed with how well this blended, how smooth everything was, how easy I was to be able to build up color, especially when you put it right next to Copic drawing. Pretty crazy how well it works. And it gets even crazier when you consider this is the untouched, straight out of the store, nothing done to it, Crayola. And by the way, these two images, what you're seeing here, these are the ones that I did at my studio the day before. And these ones came out even better with the right equipment. And I truly, truly, truly consider this a win. And if you are gonna do this, I recommend the pouring method because it works so much better, but it is a little bit more risky because you could potentially tear off the nib. But with that being said, I can't believe I'm saying this. I truly, truly do consider this a winning success. <laughs> And truly, if you have some dried out alcohol markers laying around, why not try it, you know? Anyway guys, thank you so much again for watching and turning in for this art experiment. If there's an art experiment you want me to do next, let me know and I will try it. And yeah, I will link some more videos down below as well as my merchandise. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I will uh, see you guys next video. Bye.